as Eugene was saying there, first of all, a big thank you to CETA for organizing the event and for Eugene for sharing this uh, kind of geospatial drone kind of topic. So, um, so just kind of what I'll be talking to you about, so kind of different survey technologies that can be used for your BIM kind of applications. So I work for a company, Levin Equipment Services, uh, just to give you an idea who we are. Uh, we've over 40 years experience in the industry. Uh, we have full in-house training and uh, kind of help companies develop workflows. So just kind of an idea of the, I suppose, the three distribution partners I'll be discussing. So first off, we'll be kind of going through the like a hardware software solutions. Uh, then the GeoSlam hardware solutions and going through uh, the ClearEdge software, uh, their product range then too as well. So first off, kind of like just a quick overview of your kind of typical what you'd have out on site. So mainly all this stuff would be kind of discussed would be, you know, site construction layout. Uh, so you have your typical robotics and GPS systems as well. So I won't bore you too much on drones because uh, uh, um, Colm kind of discussed everything like that already. So we've teamed up with Flyright with Ushin and Colm and the guys. Uh, where we come in is the 3D survey side of the software. So we provide kind of as you do on site, bringing all your data into one area. What can you do with the data? Volume calcs, everything like that. Where, volume, uh, where Flyright come in is the professional side in terms of you know, the training, determining what drone, everything like that. So we feel that it's a good partnership kind of going forward. So just a uh, kind of workflow that we'll be kind of discussing. So, you know, being out on site, you know, gathering data and bringing it back into the office. So we call this the informed stage, so the pre-construction as built. So being outside using total stations, laser scanners to gather all that data and bring it all into one package. Then from that data where we've modeled the data, where we've created floor plans, everything can be brought back out into the field for site set out, so we enrich in the site. And then again, validating the model, so validating the model, validating everything that's been built as built construction. So on the informed side, just kind of give you an overview of the different instrumentation that can be used on site. So we have your traditional kind of total station robotics uh, for measuring survey, high accurate survey points. Then we have for detecting underground services as well, so your telecoms, power cables, we provide the CATS, Jennies. Then onto the kind of laser scanning, so terrestrial scanning, mobile scanning. Uh, we'll talk a bit more about that in due course. And then aerial LIDAR, LIDAR as well, as Colin has mentioned earlier. Then just kind of your handheld measurement devices, so for quick on site measurements. Yeah, and GIS as well, so handheld GPS units to record facilities. So from so from being back out in the office, so bringing the data from the office back out of the site, you know, we're kind of now on the heavier grade machinery, so we're at 3D machine control, so excavating, grading, earth movement uh, out of the site. Then again, controls so are setting out using top stations uh, for MEP installations using mini robotics as we saw them, uh, 3D disco for internal MEP installations as well. And then, you know, assessing the lifetime of the job, you know, monitoring the job, making sure that there's no movement. Uh, a big one would be you now the National Children's Hospital. I think there's 10 of these, if not more, set up and continuously monitoring 24-7. So just a continuation onto that. And um, so where the Leica hardware will come in, uh, it fits into two families. So one, the Autodesk environment, and that allows you to connect up to the point layer app. Uh, so being able to connect the BIM 360 Blue, download the model, and then connecting up to the top station as well for site setup. Or we can go down the route of the Leica system, so the software called Icon. So we can import the IFC model directly <coughs> into the tablet and set out from that data as well. Again, we'll be going through a little bit more of that. So just kind of an overview of the two together, but also there recently what we've actually uh, developed a workflow is with BIM 360, uh, sorry, desk uh, 360 there, so that we can connect up to, because you're using a Windows-based tablet, that we can then load the model directly from there into the tablet. So uh, just an overview of the hardware, so the icon offering, so this is for when you're out on site, enriching the site. So there's the four kind of categories that would come under. So the iConstruct, uh, where the hardware software, the iControl, so the software technical service and the support we provide, and the consult, again, support and warranty, and then Connect, where we provide the training and the telematics options as well. 
So this is kind of the, the family of the icon. Um, but the important part here where we come to the BIM side of things is uh, now being able to import the IFC model directly into the tablet. So what this will allow us to do now is import uh, IFC. Yep. So through the objects app. Uh, so basically the general IFC format uh, allows us to, I suppose, say that this is BIM level 2 compliant. So the instrumentation, because what it also allows us to do is to stake out the model. Uh, yeah, uh, stake out the model. So, you know, to check for 3D coordination or any clash detection. So just making sure that the model that's been set for that inside is correct as well. Um, so that's this is where the whole kind of BIM platform comes in as well. You can barely see that text there. Um, right, so just a quick overview there of, so being able to select the objects on site. So you, but also what that is that you're bringing all the information of the object onto site to the engineer. So whatever information is associated with it, whether it's you know material type, depth, all the measurements all come onto site to the engineer. So he can make quick decisions then on site or record points, send them directly back to the office via telematics. So this is just kind of two little videos just to kind of show you the idea of having the IFC model there that we can break it down into different stages, whether it's by different layering or uh, different classes too as well. So we go to the, the validate. So the site has been set out on what to be used to. So we can actually use the GPS on the machinery uh, to validate. And then also your traditional kind of handheld GPS units using laser scanning as well to validate what's on site. So to make sure that the model is correct and up to date. And then the total stations as well. So I'm going to discuss now a bit about laser scanning. Um, so this will be the kind of the, the range that at LES we have to offer. Um, so first I'm going to be discussing the, the Leica range. So there's three, I suppose, three different uh, scanner series that they will come in. So we have the BLK360, uh, the small one here on the left. So you know, ideally we'd use this for internal surveys, for architects, or for kind of general survey work. Uh, it actually has a recap plug-in as well, so it kind of sits into that whole Autodesk family. Then recently, in the last five, six months, like they released the RTC360, so this would be more towards the AEC and MEP sectors, because it allows you to gather data quickly and has 130 meter range. Then we're on to the P-series, so there's three different models of the P-series, where you can scan up to one kilometer in range. So there's different, survey, uh, different uh, tools for different applications. So I'm just going to give you a little overview of the Leica RTC360. So it's fast data capture. You know, you go from 26 seconds of scan, one minute for full HDR imagery. It's agile, light, and precise. Uh, so the kind of side that I always love about this technology is, you know, seeing the technology that these companies come out with. So Leica have uh, this technology called Biz. So basically, you can simply pick up the scanner walk to another side and then know where they are relative to each other. So basically this is just kind of an overview of the technology and how it works in life. So basically that he's positioned there, he's moved and it's positioned itself relative to everything around it. Uh, and this is just kind of like a it actually doing live again. This is the kind of stuff I like, the technical side of things. So basically you can see he's picked up the scanner, he's moving along so it's continuously updating its position based off the scanner position. And then, so where does this fit? So, so kind of give you an overview of the, the Leica software and the Leica range. So we initially start off with what's called Cyclone. So Cyclone is bringing the data in together, registering it, and then being able to publish it out into different formats. So whether you're going into Cloudworks. Uh, so with Cloudworks, we have different plugins for like AutoCAD, BricsCAD, Revit. So this will allow you to bring the 3D data directly in and be allowed to model from that directly. Then we're into the visualization side. So with the visualization, we can have HTML link where we can have the scan, send it to a client, he'd be able to take measurements straight away from site. And then now kind of a plugin they're kind of working on a lot more is using VR technology then as well. So uh, that's kind of uh, on the Leica scan as well. So I, I mentioned there about GeoSlam. So the difference here is that with the GeoSlam range, it's a mobile mapping solution. So you can simply pick up the scanner, walk around, 
and scan my environment. So they have three different products uh, in that range. So we have the Zev Revo, the Zev Revo Real Time, and the Zev Horizon. Yeah, let's go through that there. So the Zev Revo Real Time. So what does this allow me to do? So I can simply pick up the scanner, walk around this floor, and it will give me a fully registered uh, point cloud. But I can also see the scan as I'm scanning as well. So to make sure that there's no black spots or anything like that. Then the newest one to the range from GeoSlam is the Horizon. So the Horizon's got a hundred meter range. Again, you, you know you're you're walking at this as well, so you're kind of between zero and uh, ten and thirty mil levels of accuracy. So it allows you to quickly do two D floor plans, three D volumes, scan to beam, and uh, for object identification. So, oh, okay. Well, there was a video there just to show, but uh, we'll let it go now. So, um, so you have all this data, what do you do with it? So there's a, an American company called Clear Edge, and they've developed two softwares, one called Edgewise and one called Verity. So we'll go through Edgewise first. So Edgewise, you go and do your scan. What this will allow you to do is automatically extract pipe work. So pipe runs, elbows, vents, valves, flanges, everything for you and then allow you to bring that into Revit or another modeling program. So basically the idea of it is there, as you can see, it speeds up your workflow by 75%. So perfect for if you're doing any kind of MEP. So you know if you're bringing raw point cloud data into Revit and you're trying to model all that pipe work, it's going to take you a long time. Whereas in this software it has all these algorithms, everything to automatically extract that for you. So from I beams, walls, door openings, everything, this will do it for you. Um, so that's how you, you'd model your data. So that's how we would we don't rich there on the side. So basically, um, I suppose this is where the kind of the beam would come into it. So Verity. So what Verity is plug in for Navisworks. It allows you to verify your model against the as-built data. So just to give you an idea of the workflow, so these will be the last couple of slides there. So I load in my model. I load in my point cloud once they're aligned. I can then select the elements I want to compare. So what this is allowing us to do then is to analyze, are those beams in the right place? If not, you know, it, it will flag it for us. So I can run my analysis and then set up uh, my tolerance settings with it. And then all this will do is then tell me, you know, what's in the right position? Is it within the tolerance that we set? Or is it even there? As you can see, there's a few items included there in red. So this was the last quick sample here. So for instance, here on the left side, you'll see kind of the purple. Uh, so the purple beam, so that's your model. So that's the, the federated model that's been loaded in. And then on the right side, the kind of cyan color represents the scan data and where it actually thinks that that uh, object is. So what this will allow you to do is, um, now I'm going to go back and forth between the two sides. So on the left side we have Navisworks uh, and on the right side is uh, Verity. So basically you can see there, I can update my model directly. So then updating the federated model, then I can push that back out. So everything that's there is done. Um, Right, so just to finish on this, um, you know, as LES is an organization, you know, we don't want to leave you home alone and dry, um, you know, not to be scared of adopting this technology, you know, we're there to help you out, or there are professional companies out there as well that have all this system as well that can help you out, so, uh, yeah, if you have any further questions uh, or questions after this, I'll be down to stand 12, thank you. Thank you very much, Andrew, into the current uh, geospatial technology. And I will open the floor for questions. Anyone want to start? Yes? Just a question on the, the data. So that's what I find is the biggest yeah. challenge I've had when using scan, mm -hmm. is that you get this, a lot of good data, but you're talking between 50 and 80 gigs yeah. of data. And, Trying to manage that. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so like I have a, a program or a plugin called Jetstream. So, what Jetstream will allow you to do is uh, you load Jetstream onto your server, you upload that data into your server. Then there's different plugins for Revit, any Autodesk product called uh, Cloudworks, 
what that allows you to do is stream the data down. So you're not downloading the 50, 60 gigabytes of data. Yes, it's a big set of data. You're actually, you know, every time you zoom in and out, it's actually just streaming that data for you. So eventually, if you work on the model for five or six hours, yes, it might load, you know, 10, 15 gigabytes of data because you're uploading every time. But yeah, that, that's how uh, there's workarounds for that as well. Yeah. Anyone else? I actually have a question for you, Andy. Um, I know the geospatial technology is something that's close to my heart as well. I'm a geospatial professional myself. And I know that in the last 10, 15 years, technology changed massively. Um, where do you think the technology will move in the next 10 to 15 years? Good question. Um, well, I suppose if you, if you kind of look at where it is now, where you know, we have, let's say, for instance, you know, GPS before where we had to hold plumb to get, well, you know, GPS is all relatively accurate anyway, but now we have GPS where we can hold at an angle and tilt and not worry about, you know, having to hold the whole plumb. Where, what I probably see is maybe, you know, can they develop the IMU technology in that for, let's say, robotic toll stations where, you know, you have the high accuracy of a robotic toll station and, you know, you're not having to hold it level where it automatically adjusts based off some contraption of form. But um, a lot more is gearing towards, I suppose, mobile mapping, as kind of mentioned there with like the GeoSlam, where you can just simply walk around. Um, I don't know if that technology can be improved in accuracy or in terms of the, the SLAM algorithm itself. And um, maybe there might be improvements there. Um, a good question to ask. That'll be, uh, so then on our stand we have Sven, uh, he'd be the ideal person to ask for that kind of stuff, but I, I'd say kind of maybe mobile mapping would be the, and how to improve the accuracy we get from that, uh, speed, how fast we can gather the data. But then also, as uh, Jason mentioned there, about reducing the size of the data and how we handle that data as well, you know, that's, that'd be a big part of there. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Andrew. No problem. Anyone else? And one more question before oh, yeah. <laughs> we finish here. Um, you mentioned GeoSlam and uh, the SLAM technology. Yeah. Um, are there any requirements in relation to um, site condition, lighting, or um, um, not to do with lighting. temperature, pressure? So, yeah, so I suppose that's where now, where you'd had in initially limits where with the Revo unit, um, you know, in big open environments, so like walking across the field there, let's say, because of the kind of 60 meter range. Whereas in now with the new horizon, we've got extended range, which actually helps the slam a lot more because you're gathering in more data and more features to help tie that all in together. So yeah, I, I think that was a big improvement by GeoSound to bring out the horizon. Yeah. Thank you very much. No problem. Thank you very much, Andy. And if you have any more questions, you can stand there.